Well, let's bring in 6PR Perth's Oliver Peterson to discuss the stories of the day now. Welcome, Oliver. I, I mentioned just before the uh, the attack from France today over our potential support for the, uh, the, the nuclear weapons ban treaty. Uh, I just can't understand why, when we already have a nuclear treaty that we've been party to since the late 60s, and we know that our allies have nuclear weapons for the, the purpose of uh, deterring other nations like Russia and China, why would we get on board with the idea of stripping the West with nuclear weapons? Mm. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, Caleb? It's rather awkward because, you know, when we dumb it down, we've got good guys and we've got bad guys who hold nuclear weapons. And as you so eloquently put in your editorial this afternoon, some of our major allies are the holders of these nuclear weapons. And with the current state of international relations, we want those people or those countries on our side and on our team in case we mm. one day have to call upon it. I don't think there's any, any need to sign up to the treaty. I think the Prime Minister is going to try and push this one out as far as possible. I think that, I think that the uh, concerns being raised by the French are completely stating the obvious here, and they're probably trying to needle a couple of years on the fact that we dumped their submarines mm. for nuclear submarines. So it's a bit of a nuclear kind of day, isn't it, Caleb? Because we heard <laughs> Mr Holmes Accord as well talking about nuclear energy, but say not the Liberals' type of nuclear energy. There's some sort of nuclear energy we should talk about somewhere in the future. I uh, know. I'll, I'll talk a bit uh, about that later in the show. But, you know, it, it is good to see, though, uh, green advocates, you know, finally starting to come around to the idea of nuclear energy and admitting that it's not the bogeyman we've been told it is. Um, moving on to The Voice, we've got less than two weeks to go now until the, the Voice to Parliament referendum and many Australians are heading to the polls early, uh, voting from today. I think early voting open today in Victoria, the NT, Tasmania and Western Australia. And then you'll have Queensland and New South Wales will join on to tomorrow. Here was the Prime Minister out spruiking the voice again today. Well, I'm optimistic that when Australians focus on what the actual question is, what we've had is a whole lot of disinformation uh, out there. I know a lot of people have not made up their mind. And what I know is that the feedback, when people talk through uh, these issues, uh, they uh, arrive at a yes vote pretty comfortably. And so I sincerely think the key to the next fortnight is those one-on-one -on -one conversations. There he is running the disinformation line again, basically setting it up so if the, the referendum falls over, you know, it wasn't our fault, it was someone else's fault, uh, they, they spread all this nonsense that caused the no campaign to get up. But uh, Senator Jacinta Price and Warren Mundine are set to hold a mass rally in your neck of the woods tonight. I think about 1,200 Western Australians are expected to be in attendance. I, I've heard they've even had to turn people away because they've had so many people wanting to come along. Yeah, and so many questions still, Caleb, that are being asked by plenty of Australians are exactly what is within the detail of the voice. And you, the Prime Minister can't stand up and say the disinformation. Well, he's had an opportunity now for months to answer a bunch of those questions. Uh, you're right, Senator Price and uh, Warren Mundine will be leading that uh, launch of the No campaign here in Perth again this evening. Uh, the rally cry for the No campaign, which is really gaining a lot of support in my neck of the woods here in, in Perth. The polls are all pointing towards a, a No victory out of Western Australia. Uh, but I think probably what most Australians want, Caleb, is the, the next two weeks to, to pass as quickly as possible yeah. so that we can have a result one way or the other. I think everybody's probably getting sick and tired of hearing, you know, the radicals on the left or the radicals on the right, and they just want to cast their votes. Uh, but what will be left of that and picking up the pieces, I know we're not going to stop talking about it in two weeks. It's going to continue for many, many months. And mm. what sort of a country do we live in in two weeks' time, Caleb? It'll be really interesting uh, the way that uh, this plays out over the next two weeks and exactly how far both sides of the campaign on those fringes uh, mm. will go to, to spread that misinformation the PM speaks of. Yeah, and of course, what the reaction will be after the result comes through. I mean, I suspect that if the, the result yeah. is a no, um, the reaction will be a lot more rabid um, than, than if it were to get up. I mean, if it, if it gets up, it, it gets up, you, you move on and uh, we get on with life. Um, but it's interesting to, to see the, this positivity that the Prime Minister continues to exude. And obviously, you don't want to get up and say, oh, well, it, it's all over. That's Rule 101 of campaigning. Um, but saying, oh, well, you know, the more people look at it, the more they come around to it. Has the bloke read a poll lately? 
<laughs> that's it. And, and I know they like, don't, don't like to talk about the polls, but you'd think that, uh, you know, clinging to the desperation over the weekend, uh, photographs, of course, with footballers at the AFL grand, fi grand final and the NRL grand final as well. Uh, I know that it's, uh, it's uh, Nathan Cleary, isn't it, yes. today? He's put the, yep. the vote yes message out on social media. The PM's retweeted that. I mean, that's probably the best campaign the, the yes side's had for some time. Nathan Cleary, the talk of <laughs> at least the, uh, the east coast of Australia, which plays rugby league... Uh, but uh, you're right. If you look at the polls, you'd be saying, well, let's not do this. Let's do it at some other time or, or delay it. The PM's not going to do that. He's, as you say, setting up for the fact that the no vote will get up and starting the disinformation narrative mm. now because yeah. he realises it'll be a pretty fractured Australia come October 15. Well, if uh, Nathan Cleary can get the Yes campaign over the line, it'll be just as extraordinary as his work getting Penrith over the line last <laughs> night, I reckon. Um, now, Labor's this week being slammed for their union-controlled policy agenda. It's, it's the subject of this week's Senate hearings into the government closing loopholes legislation. Um, so we're talking about the, the IR laws here, right? Does... Business have a right to be concerned about this because we've seen a, a suite of measures come out. Uh, we've had Tony Burke talk about, for instance, people who work in you know things like Uber Eats and all that sort of stuff being entitled to the mm. same things as a, a full or part-time employee in terms of pay entitlements, leave entitlements, etc. And then at the same time, you've had this employment white paper come out, which makes all these great suggestions about how we get more people working at the same time as we're told that we need unemployment to go up in order to curb inflation. It all seems like a bit of a mishmash to me. Yeah, it is a mishmash, but I think, Caleb, you know, ultimately nobody wants any Australians to be ripped off or be underpaid, but uh, this idea of having a standardised payment across all sectors, across all industries, uh, you, you've got to have some sort of competitive advantage. It's got to mm. be an employee-employer relationship to, to battle it out, to be able to land the job, to be paid the money you want to be paid. And I note as well the TWU is quite concerned that owner-operator truck drivers as well might be made a mess of in these IR laws. So watch this space. It's not all about big business. Uh, unions are a little worried as well. Mm. Oliver Peterson, thank you so much for joining me.